Um, so we're going to tell you today about uh, Velocity. Um, it was a response to the National Infrastructure Commission competition for how they would deliver a million new homes on the Oxford to Cambridge corridor. So this was announced by the Treasury last year as uh, part of their strategy to improve business and economic well-being um, around London. Um, and then this is a diagram from a report that was done by Fifth Studio for the National Infrastructure Commission to indicate where all of the main corridors coming from London were and to show this points, um, between Oxford and Cambridge where this new arc will um, exist. So um, they'll be building a new train line, fast, uh, fast uh, train line between the two, and I think just the other day they've approved the, um, the rail route for it. Um, so in the fifth studio report, um, they kind of very wisely pointed out that um, if you're going to provide a million homes, there's not just one way of doing it. And they set out a number of typologies. Um, you could either in intensify the centres, you could have suburban intensification, um, you could have urban extensions, and of course this all related to places like Milton Keynes or to um, Oxford, or you could have something called a string development. And that was a typology that we decided to take on for our proposal. So um, our proposal is called Velocity, and it is really based around the idea that one changes the form of transport and moves it to a fine grain of cycling and tra travel. And I'm trying to make this. I don't know how it works. Um, you can see here very clearly the, um, the fast train line that runs between Oxford to Cambridge. And we picked a point on that train line where the, the train would stop called Winslow, um, and we went out there. And what we recognised was that uh, one of the big issues is that nobody is looking at rural communities. Um, we know that um, the report for Community and Rural Affairs has said that communities are failing. Um, something like 95% of um, village halls um, are almost unsustainable. So our idea was to connect these villages together um, and over, um, based on a, a distance of seven miles, which is the maximum that anybody will um, cycle. Oh, well done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, between different places um, to connect them together. And it was interesting that Neil mentioned the routes and the paths that people have crossed over centuries because we actually walked these routes and there are direct routes that have existed for hundreds of years between all of these villages. So what we're proposing to do is to actually put cycle tracks on them, which are a very low-cost way of uh, connecting places, and to put high-speed and digital connections across those to make these really desirable places for people to live. So um, these villages would then be connected together with their existing road, and the cycle routes would go between them, and then we aim to densify the villages which already have heritage in them, and we know that people like to live around places that have a history to them, so to densify those, and then each of these clusters links back to um, the main train station. So our proposal was that we were going to build over a period of 30 years six, 600 new homes per village. But we weren't planning on doing it all at once. We were looking at incremental growth of 25 homes per village per year. So that would be 3,000 homes per village cluster. And we were looking at 20,000 new homes um, per cluster. So we believe, looking at the countryside around there, plotting routes between them, that we could provide this way about 40% of the homes across the corridor. And the point is that if we don't do that, at the average, which is the planning average of 25 homes to 30 homes per hectare, you would basically just concrete um, the countryside from Oxford to Cambridge all the way across if we carry on doing what we're doing now. So we saw the problems as being increasing congestion on the road, which is, I think, costing the economy something like 11 billion a year. And if we, um, so moving people out of cars is a really great thing. 
Uh, we have an ageing population. I think there's going to be 25% of the population will be over 65 by 2045. So travelling long distances to care for these people doesn't make sense. So bringing them close together in communities does make better sense. We're all living very unhealthily. Um, national guidelines are we should be doing 30 minutes of exercise a day. Why not include that and into your cycling routes? Um, and also to create options for a more varied group of people and housing typologies. Um, and then the other issue that we feel very strongly about is the amount of social isolation there is. So this kind of rolling out of suburban suburbs that demand cars is creating that social isolation. Um, and it's not just in older people. The report came out recently that it's also in younger people as well. So that is um, a kind of summary of our scheme, um, with these places being connected together. And it's a scalable solution that we could, don't need to do just on the Oxford-Cambridge corridor, but could be run in other places. Um, we've tested it. So this is actually the, um, the villages that we tried out. And there you can see the pathways and existing routes that run through. Um, this is Richmond Park, which people cycle around regularly, it's not undoable. And of course with electric bikes coming, seven miles is not such a long distance, especially if you've got a, a nice waterproof cape, which everybody in Holland has. Um, we then worked um, out how we would replicate this, and we, we believe it's absolutely replicable. Um, and then this shows the, the principle of putting the bicycle first. So we're not telling people to get out of their cars completely, but we're making it so that it's much more desirable to get on a bike. Um, and the aim is that um, these existing roads um, will be used for deliveries. The new cycle routes will be used for commuting. If you want to go to Winslow in your car, then you'll have to kind of go out and back and then back along the road. So we're making healthy living the easy option. We're, we're trying to improve that for people. And um, then we're connecting all of these places together around a central heartland. Um, um, so this looks like a bit of a table, but we were trying to address a myriad of different um, things all at once. You know social isolation, social cohesion, uh, issues of the environment, carbon reduction, reducing uh, local travel by vehicles, um, enriching the soil, so we'll tell you a little bit more about the technology in a moment, creating a sharing economy, and then also in this kind of strange world of Brexit, post-Brexit, actually opportunities to incrementally develop um, these villages so that the technology that goes with them could be locally produced and um, uh, tested. So our idea um, is what we call the modern day picturesque. It's um, based on building on existing character of villages and uh, villages are something that um, are very much largely untouched um, today or the kind of development that's happening is, is not um, sustainable. Um, in, in context of today's theme, it's very much about integrating infrastructure and housing through placement. Um, so this is just a snapshot from, from our and <laughs> talking to a few of the locals because we really felt that they need to be involved in the process of change uh, and it's a long-term uh, process. Um, so what we saw also currently and what the current planning regulation um, sort of... Um, uh, yeah, the current uh, regulation. What the current uh, reg regulation promotes is um, is uh, kind of the single bungalow, large scale uh, housing that's sprawling between the villages on the main roads um, at a very low density of uh, roughly 25 units per hectare. So what we are proposing is uh, is more compact um, and higher density housing, which is around um, the retained historic village core uh, at around 100 units per hectare. Um, each of the villages, so on the cluster that we studied, um, for instance, um, developed around a different um, architectural typology, so whether well, it was a, f uh, a village farm or the manor, and uh, enhancing this character and um, thereby diver diversifying the individual village clusters, each village, 
uh, and all the way across the corridor at different scales uh, was something that we wanted to foster to uh, have more of a shared economy. So historically, each village used to have a pub, a school, uh, the shop, and uh, sorry. Um, and by um, by sharing those, you could have a school, and then you could have a GP surgery in a different village in one cluster. Uh, once you get more and more critical mass of people to those places, you can add more and more services and a less and less commuting time for people locally uh, to access those services. Um, uh, so we came up with a spatial plan and a design code which was, um, as I said, uh, focused on retaining the historic village core. So the pink ones are the new proposed village fields clustered around the historic village core. We also wanted to preserve the views into these picturesque landscape fields. Um, and uh, these are some initial ideas how those housing typology fields uh, could be uh, imagined. They scale, uh, they, they uh, differ in tenure, so you, you would have a mix of tenure, uh, also with some uh, ideas of shared uh, live work spaces. Um, and uh, this was initial idea of an imagined, uh, based on an imagined village where, uh, how that would work um, in 3D, so you ha you'd have the gray uh, is the historic village core, you'd get the deliveries to the edge of the village where you might have some larger sheds or co-working hubs and then different types of housing clustered around. Um, in terms of impact on uh, the visual uh, landscape of the village, uh, you can see that actually even 100 units per hectare, we've tested it across different villages and uh, they are two to four story buildings which would fit in um, quite easily. Um, the other thing is one of our team um, has worked with us to ensure technology is changing. We believe these villages can be self-sustaining so we can use um, solar energy, we can use wind energy. Um, there's enough land there that we can um, do the wastewater treatment and we can actually use some of that as fertilizer on the land. Uh, there is a big issue that the land in the UK is degrading very rapidly and soil quality is, so we want to sort of reinvest in improving that. Um, so this is part of our proposal. Um, and the technology is coming. Um, at the moment when you build, there's a huge infrastructure cost in road, power, etc. at the outset. And what we're looking at is a sort of incremental growth. As the number of houses come, then the amount of technology and services you put in increases. So we're switching the financial model for developing these. And part of the idea of um, densifying um, and focusing the housing around the village core is also to, to free and uh, preserve um, large areas of this um, picturesque landscape um, that we imagine when we think of the English countryside. Um, and we want this landscape to actually uh, work hard with the new technologies that we have so you could have productive landscape around the edges of the villages where you could have allotments and you could um, use hydroponics to, to get more self-sustained sources of food locally. I mean, it will not uh, be the entire source of food for the village, but it will provide, over time, could provide <coughs> a large proportion uh, locally. Uh, then there was an, uh, the idea of preserving kind of the picturesque landscape in between and then focusing in each village cluster on an active um, social heart uh, which will be uh, determined in terms of the function by the individual village cluster so the inhabitants of the villages could decide whether they wanted um, let's say a fishing pond or uh, farmers markets uh, what sort of program and focus they wanted to have so across the corridor this landscape uh, the big back garden will, will be different across the corridor and it could become even a, a tourist attraction wider beyond. Um, the, the, uh, the role of the landscape is very much also to act as a platform to engage people in the process of change. Uh, we talked about the 30 year and one million new homes in the corridor and we feel that both uh, existing local residents uh, and businesses as well as attracting new people to the corridor is really important. Um, and they need to be engaged throughout. Uh, the incremental um, focus of, of the strategy is, is to enable also uh, local employment and uh, enhance local economies. So you, you could, uh, with 25 
new homes per village per year. You can uh, well imagine that these homes could be built by local builders um, using local craftsmen a lot more, so it doesn't have to go through large uh, national uh, construction frameworks. Also, it's very low cost in terms of the infrastructure because the roads and everything that's already there is, is being reused, so we're not building new infrastructure. Um, and then this is just really the basic EV diagram. This is Winslow that we showed you earlier on. Uh, these are actually the existing routes through the countryside that we're planning on putting the cycle routes on. Uh, and then these are the villages growing over time um, with their kind of delivery depots. Um, and, you know, we, we'd even like to see wind turbines running along the railway to produce energy. You know, why, why should we um, have nuclear plants? Um, so this is a replicable idea. Um, so just as a recap, um, all the circles, uh, the light pink circles, it's kind of barely visible, but there's around 20 clusters of villages across, across the corridor which, which comes up with the 400,000 of the 1 million new homes by 2050. Um, and, and the three takeaways today um, were really uh, about integrating the housing and infrastructure through design and placemaking. Uh, really looking at it from a people's perspective, so people focus and engaging them in the process, but also just putting yourself in, you know, in the perspective of the user. And um, Kay maybe wants to elaborate yeah, on the well, loose fit. Um, just, just loose fit on the infrastructure, because if you're doing it incrementally, technology is uh, changing very quickly, so that you can put the new technology in as those communities grow. Um, but ultimately, it's about if they want this to be a successful corridor, they want to draw the best people there and to make homes and places for the people who live there. It needs a new approach because uh, the way it's going to go, it's not going to provide that really beautiful, uh, safe and, and lovely environment for families and elderly, elderly people to live in in the future. So, um, following Velocity, we've, we've um, recently also completed the value of um, design um, report for the National Infrastructure Commission. And whereas this was looking at uh, uh, large scale sort of national infrastructure, um, a lot of the themes that we mentioned around Velocity really resonated in there. And so just as a recap, um, you know, uh, some of the findings from the report, which, which you can look, at, look up on the NIC website are that really design, uh, really client teams need to take uh, ownership of design leadership um, very early on from the beginning of the project and invest in design upfront, which all of the people we've interviewed, the clients and the design team said that investing in design upfront really has reduced cost and, and led more importantly to much better outcomes, uh, much more really for, for people. Um, integrated collaborative, um, focus on people and simple sustainable outcomes. By that we mean not kind of trying to do technological gimmick in terms of sustainability, but actually uh, think in a very common sense way about uh, sustainability and social sustainability as well. Um, and yes, yeah, so this is us, um, the Velocity team. So we should mention all co collaborators on this project. Uh, Judith Sykes, Expedition Engineering, Jennifer Rose from t -Bells. Um Myself, Anna Lee Ritchie from Mikhail Ritchie's K, and Sarah Featherstone from Featherstone Young. And um, we, we've spoken uh, to many people over the course of this year um, and uh, are currently undertaking further research, actually funded by the RIBA, on density and villages. So uh, hopefully, we'll be presenting the findings of that at some point soon. Thanks. Thank you.